Good morning, everybody. It is a fabulous day here in Minnesota. Uh, us Minnesotans love early fall uh, and, and mid fall. Um, the, the ditches, the foliage starts getting rusty. We get those nice cool uh, evenings for sleeping and all that stuff. And it is fabulous here. Happy and sad though, because we're getting to the end of our exterior season now, and we have to start taking into a lot of other considerations. And today is one of the best prototypical days for that. It is about 42 degrees. Um, most paints, most exterior paints have a speck of about 35. I like to keep it at about 40 degrees. And we start running into dew. We start running into wind. We got farmers in the field who are combining and, and throwing up chaff and dust. There is winds, there are storms, there are other things. The, the days are shorter. So we're going to talk about that later on today. Thank you guys for watching here. What today, guys? Not only are we going to be talking about this beautiful little machine right here, we're going to be talking about some exterior painting in the fall, maybe extreme temps, uh, depending on where you are in the country. Uh, but first, we got to mention the PCA, the Painting Contractors Association. This is a organization that builds better contractors. A lot of the things that I know and love and preach, I have gathered from other contractors around the world. I didn't come up with all this stuff on my own. There's some ways we make it unique for my business. All right, there we go. We're back. Uh, sorry, we're out on here on the farm internet, so it kind of is what it is. So um, I was saying the PCA builds better contractors. These are all great concepts. I've gathered them from people around the country. I've made them unique to my business and I share them for other people because all the problems that you are experiencing, all the friction points that you're experiencing as a craftsperson and a business owner are experienced by 300,000 other contractors in the United States. We're all trying to work to fix them. Why not do some knowledge sharing? I'm a true believer that we all do better when we all do better. That is the sort of ethos of the PCA. If you like what I say and what I do, I am the tip of the iceberg. There are thousands of us in there. And if you're interested, there's a link down below if you want more. Tons of content, tons of paid content, tons of free content, tons of awesome people. Master's classes and events. We got some coming up here. Next week, I'm going to be with my friends at Surf Prep in Lake Elsinore. Um, it'll be October 1st. Um, you can still get in there. There's open slots. So let me know. Let the PCA know. There's a link down below if you want to go there. This is going to be cool. Part one and part two of the modern apprenticeship. I basically show you how I grew my business from zero to about 22 and then to 30 people uh, over the last couple of years here and how we do it with less friction, how we do it with profit. Um, and we focus very heavily on the people side. Um, you've probably heard this. There's no good people out there. Uh, that is absolutely not true. I'll show you data. I'll show you feelings and I will show you exactly how I did it in my business. You can join me for a day. The solution's right there. Uh, I'll be going to uh, Chicagoland uh, early November. Link down there below. We're going to be doing a similar thing, Modern Apprenticeship 1 and 2. So if you can get in there, please spend a day with me. Uh, we'll knowledge share. I'll show you what I'm doing in my business. We'll talk about what you're doing in your business, answer any questions. We're going to Nashville uh, soon after that. So if you're interested in that, this is a new one. Uh, I'm rolling out a brand new master's class for that one, which is building a leadership team, which I've been doing over the last couple of years. And we're almost fully formed and I'll share exactly how I do it, who I'm looking for, what we do, what our key accountabilities are, what our job descriptions are, and how we all focus and how we keep a strong company culture. And then if that's not enough, I'm going to Brazil. I am headed to Brazil in October. One of my best friends on the planet, Ronnie, my colleague, friend, master craftsperson, master trainer, interpreter, life of the party, Ronnie, is coming to Minnesota to live and work with me for a while. And then we are both packing up. We're going to Brazil. And the main function of it is going to meet up with one of arguably the coolest guys in the entire world painting industry, Giuliano Alcantara. Uh, he's been a longtime uh, social media friend of mine. Uh, our families have spoken together. He is one of the most thoughtful, well-rounded dudes I've ever met. And we are going to meet together and do some stuff. We're going to be painting in Brazil. We're going to be traveling the countryside, meeting people. Look more for that. Um, two or three years ago, I did this trip too. We did a cultural exchange, completely changed my life, changed the way I think about family, changed the way I think about business. And it's a wonderful thing. Now, that's enough of that, guys. I know you're here for the sprayer giveaway. I put notes in here. There is a post. Go to the Facebook Ask a Painter Live page. And there is a pinned post at the top of the page. You'll see my office with a sprayer with me in it and a whole bunch of comments. 
um, the instructions, if you want to be entered into this, are there. So go there, look for that pin post, follow the instruction, and you're going to be entered to win one of these guys here, these beauties. So I don't know that you're probably not going to get my personal one here. Uh, this is my little baby, but uh, you'll probably end up getting one in a nice little box, just like you guys saw me get uh, this last week here. So all right, folks, if you have any questions about any of that stuff, you can always contact me offline. But otherwise, we are here to talk about this guy, and we're here to talk about Sherwin-Williams and paint and painting in the fall here. So number one, I'll give you a quick overview of this guy. Uh, this is the Nova 390 PC. This looks like every other PC, uh, every other 390 that you guys know and love. Difference, this little guy down here. We have battery power. You guys have seen them in the handhelds. We know and love those things, but now you bring it to a production rig, a big boy, a real deal sprayer. Now, I have been getting bombarded with questions about this particular guy all week. Here's what you need to know about this. Pricing is going to come from Sherwin-Williams, so contact your rep, contact your store, and work with them on pricing uh, for your company. This thing will do what a regular 390 does. The PSI spec, 3300 PSI is the same, 0.47 gallon per minute, the same, and it'll uh, support up to a 21 orifice tip. So lest you think that this is the weakened, less than watered down version of a 390, this will do what a 390 does. It just, you're not tethered to an outlet or you're not tethered to a generator. You're not fighting other contracts on a job site uh, in order to plug this guy in. You know, we've all... <laughs> Every contractor who's been around for more than more than a few years has been on a new construction job site and has fought for that one outlet in the kitchen that they that they do. And there's 14 power strips attached to it. That outlet and everything into it is hot to the touch. It's unsafe. Not a great way to go around construction sites, but honestly, it's like every construction site we're on here. So uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful machine here. Um, the hottest questions about this are about the batteries. So here we go. This thing comes with two of these big boys right here. And it comes with the fast charger. The specs are, this thing will charge a battery in 60 minutes. I've been doing that um, since I got this sprayer here, way less than that. But again, the specs say 60 minutes. I will I will vouch for less than that. Batteries come with a little uh, safety cover here to keep all your terminals and everything clean and transport. Uh, these batteries are really cool because they actually have an indicator light on them like that. You can see that it will tell you uh, how charged your batteries are, which is really cool. The machine only, uh, it takes one battery at a time, so you can have one charging and one in here, or just one there. One battery will spay, spray three gallons of paint. Three gallons of paint. Um, trying to think what else you guys need to know. Otherwise, it's it's basically the, the 390 that you guys know and love. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful machine. I've been messing with it since I got it, and it's exactly as advertised. It's a very powerful, very substantial uh, real deal tool for your business. And I've been, I've been loving the innovation, uh, over the years. I mean, think about what we've witnessed over the last bunch of years with number one, just handheld cordless airless sprayers. Great thing. Then you start getting into like FFLP tips. What has changed spraying for us more than these? These things are a godsend. Um, they are, they are wonderful, wonderful tools that honestly make us better sprayers. It is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I love that they're efficient. There's less overspray. They use less paint. Yeah, it's just I love to see that progression there uh, with that. So, all right, if you want one of these, you know exactly what to do. There's uh, notes in this show right here. Uh, otherwise, go to the Ask a Painter Live Facebook page. There's a pin post at the top. Follow the instructions there. You might get one of these bad boys. They will choose a winner uh, on a, uh, September 30th. The, the, the entrance closed September 30th, so that this next, that's this next week. And then somebody's going to get one of these bad boys. So I will be happy uh, to send one of these out to somebody uh, along with Sherwin and, uh, and Graco. And uh, all I would ask, send a picture, send a video, send some stuff because these are fun. All right, so let's talk about fall time painting. Um, Here's where we're at in our season right now. We might have four to five weeks of exterior painting left. We might have two weeks left. We might have four weeks, but with heavy dew and wind and rain and everything in there where you only get a day or two a week, that doesn't make for an efficient schedule. 
there are so many factors, at least in the upper Midwest here, when you have a cool morning with no wind, you might get heavy, heavy dew to the point where if you take five steps out in your grass, your boots are soaked down to your shoes, uh, down to your socks. Now, the problem is if it's a cool, still day with no wind, I've seen that heavy dew hang around till 12 or one o'clock uh, on the north side of a house or in a shaded area like that. And as you can imagine, that doesn't make for great painting um, conditions. Um, we use digital moisture meters heavily at this time of the year. Even on mornings like this, we're, we're blessed with, um, it's a cool morning, like I said, about 42 degrees, but there's a nice breeze. You can hear the leaves rustling in the background. That keeps the dew at bay. That dissipates a lot of that moisture early on. And for me, temp is less of an issue. I mean, we all know that once it gets insanely uncomfortable between 35 and 40 and maybe even 35 to 45 painting outside, you don't want to be outside painting anyway. To me, it's moisture. So when you have something like this, Sherwin-Williams Latitude, um, this stuff gives you a longer range uh, of, of uh, moisture resistance to paint in. Um, this stuff is, again, what you know and love from Sherwin-Williams. They always put out good products. Uh, this will go down to 35, it will go up to 120, but it's not just the temperature spec that's unique about this thing. It's that moisture resistance. And within 30 minutes, it can be resistant to moisture and it's got mildew inhibitors in it that will actually inhibit the growth of mildew on the surface of the coating. So the one thing, when you read the technical data sheet, when you re read the reviews on lines, when you look at all the instructions for it, the one thing you will not find in there about this coating is they, that are very easy to go on, but don't cover and kind of, you know, don't give a good mill thickness. There are products that are not that fun to put on, but do great. They put on very thick and it feels like this is a great combination of both where um, the paint feels uh, for master crafts people, you understand the paint feels lubricated. The ease of application is really kind of fun to do. We've all had paints that kind of drag, that kind of stick on one end is two parts epoxy. On other ends are enamels. Uh, this is a great combination. Um, when we use it, it covers really, really well. Uh, it does dry fairly quickly, especially in this um, in these conditions here, which you know there's um, the biggest sort of nightmare uh, scenario at a time of year like this. This happened to me once in my entire 29 career, 29 year career. The conditions were absolutely perfect. Um, it's called surfactant leaching, and if you guys have not heard of this or seen this before, Google search, talk to your rep, talk to other painters. When you've experienced it once, it's one of the freakiest things you'll ever see. Um, perfect conditions for surfactant leaching. Surfactant is part of the paint. It's a, I am not a scientist. I'm gonna use words that are probably not scientifically accurate, but you will understand what I mean when I say this. It is a soapy substance. If you try to wash it off of a house, it sudses up and, and makes bubbles. Surfactant is something that they put into paint to make it better or to have it do something. It's just one of the components of paint. Um, typical day, let's say it's 39 degrees, it's 100% still, insanely high humidity, and it's going to be cool, relatively cool, and no breeze all day. I once hand painted a house deep, deep, deep black navy blue all by myself. I did a coat. By the time I finished the entire house, it was still wet on the first side and it was not drying uh, to the point where it almost looked wetter than when I put it on. Now, what happens is if paint doesn't form a film and dry and that liquid start evaporating, it'll actually start separating. The surfactant will actually separate out from the paint and uh, yeah, it will, it will come out and it will leave this kind of uh, clear, oily, and worst case, orangish, yellowish substance, kind of, it looks like just sagging all over the house. It, it feels oily to the touch, and um, the way you fix it, the way you fix it is actually wash it off. It, uh, in, uh, in fixing uh, the time that we had it, you basically take a pressure washer and a scrub brush, and we scrub the paint. It didn't leave any Mars on the paint. At that point, uh, it was middle of the summer, so we were using a duration flat. I was very concerned that scrubbing it with a bristle brush would you know, mar the paint, but we got one of those nice car wash brushes, a couple of those things with the softer bristles, longer bristles. The paint was perfectly left untouched even after scrubbing and pressure washing, and we got the surfactant off, and it looks great. In my experience, I have never seen surfactant, when you wash it off, affect the, dur the durability the lifetime of the paint, you just run into those situations. If you want to guarantee yourself some surfactant leaching, 39 degree day, that's probably only going to get to 46 Fahrenheit. You want 100% humidity, you want zero wind, and you want a very dark color in paint, 
and uh, you want to apply a lot of it very heavily, and that will cause surfactant leaching on a house. Um, I hope you don't experience that, but again, sometimes the weather and everything else conspires, and we have user error. We probably should not have painted the house that day to do that. But those are my main concerns. Moisture is a big, big concern to me at this time of the year. Not even temps. Um, my first uh, paint rep, uh, Eric, uh, told me long ago, because I was always worried about temps, like, what do we do with these night times and the this and the this? He's like, 35 and going up. If it's 35 and going up, you're good to paint. And then just quit a little early if you're concerned about temp. So what that means is, let's say it's 35 degrees right now. As long as that temp's going up, you're okay. You never want to be in a situation where it's 36 and the temp is dropping. That is not okay. No bueno for that. So one of my biggest concerns as well at this time of the year is going to be um, nighttime temps too. Um, setting proper client expectations and... Um, helping clients understand what it is to paint at this time of the year um, takes a lot of time. So the problem is there's going to be great days in November, um, but it's also snowed in mid-October in Minnesota. So we always have to take into account this stuff. Clients will say, well, listen, it's going to be 45 degrees um, in the first two weeks of November. Why can't you come paint my house? I'll say, because it's going to be 26 at night. And we have to be observant of the nighttime temperatures. If we work until 3, 4, 5 at night, it's going to be getting dark at 7, 6, 37 at that point. And the dew is going to fall and the temperature is going to drop like a rock at that time. So for me, explaining to clients how we have to be careful of nighttime temps. And even when paints are 35, we like to build in a little thing because, you know, depending uh, a little buffer, you know, if we if, if paints are all spec to 35, I'm not a huge fan of bumping up against the specs and pushing those. I like to give myself a little buffer, say, call it 40, give or take. And you really want to uh, have clients understand that, you know, there's a big difference between if you're 500 feet higher on a hill over here, versus a low swampy wetland, there can be a pretty big drop in humidity and temperature for those times. So depending on where your house is, you know, at your house, everything may be in spec. At the job site, it may be under spec. So you got to really be careful. So moisture meters, picking the right paint, applying it in the right way, it's all important. So um, at this time of the year, uh, the biggest tips are <laughs> get something that will allow you to apply the correct amount of paint, not a super heavy coat, super fast during the day so that you can get enough on so it can dry by the time it needs to at night. And of course, we got to watch all the other things. We got crazy storms, we got snow, we got wind, we got farmers in the field, we got the dew, we got everything else. So Lots of fun this time of the year. Um, I tell you what I will do. I will look at a few of the comments here and then we're going to apply some of this stuff. And uh, yeah, it's just fun to do. I know you're not going to get the tactile feel when I spray this and back brush it on this show here, but I like watching people spray. I like watching people brush. I like watching people paint. I'll do a little for you guys just to make it satisfying. Uh, I'll give you a little tour of this thing and I'll we'll also fire this thing up. You can hear it run as well. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching, too. I really appreciate it this morning. All right, everybody. Good morning, David. Uh, pleasure to meet David uh, this last year at one of my master's classes. Uh, I always wanted to see how that pump runs. Anthony, your wish is going to come true very shortly here. So, uh, Jorn Vanderberg from the Netherlands. Good morning. Good morning. Anthony Brown, uh, good morning from Oklahoma. All right, man. So good to see you. So good to see you guys. All right scrolling through with my big fingers here. Mike Wojohn, fellow Minnesota painter. Good morning, man. Brandon Nikolai, my, my dedicated shop manager and, and decent human being. Good to see you this morning, man. Brandon, I'm sorry. Uh, you are an employee of mine. You are not eligible for the sprayer. I'm so sorry, but we got this bad boy to use, Brandon. So we got, uh, we got one guaranteed for us. So uh, looking forward to using that with you. Uh, <clears throat> David Koger, good morning. Happy to see you as well. Oscar, how's it going? Let's see, make sure I don't want to miss any. Latitude is the same as resilience up here in Montana. Dries at about 80 something. That's a wonderful, wonderful paint, guys. If you haven't used it yet, I would tell you it's a great data point to have uh, that knowledge under your belt to try that stuff. <laughs> oh, Sam, how's it going, man? Painting in Hawaii, never painting with mittens on again. Yeah. I was just talking to uh, some fellow craftspeople from my area yesterday, and we were commiserating about times that we have finished jobs in the snow in Minnesota. The temp was good, but it just started snowing uh, in a freak little snowstorm. So, yeah, funny how that works. Uh, 
Jesse, how's it going? Thank you so much. Ah, uh, Aaron Steiniger, can you buy extra batteries? Absolutely, absolutely, you can. Uh, <laughs> Michael Crane, morning sunshine. Looks like you got a ninja sprayer there. Absolutely, man. This is a yeah, it's a good machine, man. It's it's substantial. You know and love this stuff. These are these are well built. They last forever, and uh, yeah, they're just a, a a joy to work with. So, Mark Bamba, hello from Nebraska. Oh, Daniel Pop, good morning, man. Good morning from overseas. All right, people. <clears throat> all right, sorry, getting through these things here. All right, all right, we're all caught up here. All right, let's do some painting, guys. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to be wearing a mask, uh, but I want to be able to talk to you guys, but obviously wear a respirator. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to give you a little um, walk through this guy. So uh, DeWalt fast charger right here. This guy's actually got a fan in it to cool it. It, it, it fires up batteries and charges them so quick. It's actually got to be cooled. Uh, like I said, battery has the indicator light on it there. It's got the protector up top to keep your terminals clean. Um, this is where the battery goes in underneath here like this. Pretty simple in and out. Uh, one unique thing you'll notice here is grounding cord. Uh, just like our handheld sprayers, uh, it's very important that uh, we ground these things. Uh, the static that it can create uh, is, is, is a potential paint. It's a good day when you can start off with some paint in here. So, all right, sprayer is on. Got our back brush, we got our Purdy XL. All right, folks, that's it for this morning on Ask a Painter. Thank you guys for watching. If you want one of these things, if you want uh, if you want to buy one, you can talk to your Sherwin-Williams store or your Sherwin-Williams rep. If you want a free one, you have to enter to get it. Go to the Ask a Painter Live Facebook page, look for the pin post, and we will see you there.